Hello and welcome to Gradient's weekly roundup of key business and financial developments in Sri Lanka for the week ending 29th April 2022. I'm Nishani Figuera and here are the top stories for this week. IMF talks continue, deal takes time. India wants Sri Lanka to be reclassified as a low-income country. $600 million financial aid from the World Bank but reveals uncertainty over Sri Lanka. Worker remittances continue to fall despite rupee surge. We will also briefly look at other notable news that made it across to our news desk and wrap up with a capital markets update. In our main story this week, as talks with the IMF continue, challenges begin to appear, indicating that any deal is likely to take a considerable length of time. Anne-Marie Goodlewolf, IMF's acting director for the Asia-Pacific, commented that Sri Lanka's monetary policy has to be tightened to keep inflation in check and that there is a need for a flexible exchange rate. Meanwhile, India stated that it wants Sri Lanka's debt to China of about $3.5 billion to be treated like of any other creditors once talks begin on debt restructuring. However, China expressed that it does not favour restructuring of its debt and that it was sad that the island nation had decided to engage with the IMF and defaulted on debt. India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman requested the IMF and World Bank to reclassify Sri Lanka as a low-income country from middle income for the limited purpose of debt restructuring so that the concessionary funding could be obtained. She also recommended to the IMF that the country be given emergency funding similar to that granted to Ukraine, which the Lending Institute had initially said that Sri Lanka does not qualify for. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Ali Sabri stated that Sri Lanka had asked India for another $1 billion US dollars credit for imports, as well as a $500 million US dollar loan for oil imports. This comes as the Reserve Bank of India further extended the duration of the $400 million currency swap to Sri Lanka. According to the President's Media Division, the World Bank has agreed to provide Sri Lanka with $600 million US dollars in financial assistance to pay for essential imports with $400 million likely to come through soon. Earlier, Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Tate stated that such funds would be used to purchase medicines, essential foods, fertilizer and provide financial relief to the most vulnerable in the country. On Tuesday, the World Bank, in its latest economic update on Sri Lanka, revealed that the balance of payment crisis leading to widespread shortages makes any forecast for Sri Lanka highly uncertain. Adding that the abrupt switch to a floating exchange regime would help increase competitiveness, but warned that the deepening foreign exchange crisis is putting a severe strain on the banking sector. Moreover, Standard & Poor's cut Sri Lanka's sovereign rating to selective default from CC as bond coupon payment was missed on 1.25 billion US dollars of sovereign bonds. Prices of essential items including medicines, cement and LP gas were hiked as rupee depreciation and supply shortages continued. The National Medicine Regulatory Authority approved higher prices on 61 medicines. Further, Litro Gas increased the price of a 12.5 kg gas cylinder by 2,185 rupees to 4,860, and the price of a 50 kg bag of cement rose by 400 rupees to 2,850 rupees. According to the chairman, which the Herat of Litro Gas, the company suffered. 22 billion rupees in the past year, with debts amounting to 10 billion rupees. Further, the price of laundry and body soap went up by sulfur rupees and over 100 rupees. Workers' remittances in March fell to $318.4 million, down 47.9% year on year, despite floating of the rupee in the month. Foreign workers continue to use the informal Havala system who offer significantly high rates and it is unlikely that they could be persuaded to use official channels exacerbating the country's balance of payment crisis. 
remittances have been falling since June 2021 when the central bank pegged the US dollar LKR rate and offered 210 on the dollar for foreign worker remittances. In other news this week, Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the China International Development Cooperation Agency has pledged an urgency, urgent emergency humanitarian aid of approximately 10 billion rupees to Sri Lanka, including 5,000 tons of rice, pharmaceuticals, production material and other essentials. The stock market continued to tumble after it had opened from a lengthy closure. Political and economic woes in the country were reflected, with the SPI losing 600 billion rupees in two days, only to recover significantly on Wednesday. On a positive note, foreigners were net buyers collecting blue chips. Such market activity comes despite the Securities and Exchange Commission relaxing certain rules temporarily on margin providers to accommodate investors who are facing difficulties with regard to servicing of credit obtained from the stockbrokers. And here's how the rupee performed against the dollar this week. In other market news, on a welcoming note, Levy Hotels and Resorts, an independent hotel management company, signed a deal with Radisson Hotel Group and Sino Lanka Group to operate three hotels in Sri Lanka. This includes the launch of Radisson Blue Resort near Gaul, as well as Radisson Hotels in Kandy and Colombo. And that's a wrap for this week. Follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube for more updates on business and financial developments in Sri Lanka. Until we see you again next week, thank you for watching. Stay safe.